we're gonna put on your camera here. You have your arms on high speed? Yes, I'm as high as it will go. Okay. Only your All right, so we'll, I got 14. It's the first time I get to beat you at something. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Click, 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 click. Hello everyone, this is Take from BigHeadTalker.com and I'm here at Yan Cath, Vancouver in the Railtown District of Vancouver and I have a, I shouldn't say special guest because you've been on my show how many times, John? Many. Many, many times. times. Ten. Track. So I have John Lehman, uh, photojournalist extraordinaire. Thank you. As you are. Um, so, so yeah, how many times? Maybe 10, 15 times? I don't know. We did what four or five videos in Hong Kong. No, we did way more than four or five. Oh, did we? Yeah. Lost track. And it's just a, it's just a dizzy okay. array of videos. Okay. It? So I, so I've been. Okay. So you've been on my channel. Right. How many? Fifteen times. Yes, possibly. Okay. How many times have I been on your channel, John? Uh, well, it's not my channel. It's okay. a channel I share with two other collaborators. Although you're using wordage to try to defend <laughs> yourself, the answer is zero. <laughs> I know you already have an Asian guy, yeah, <laughs> Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy's a great guy, but the the other Asian guy. So if you haven't already done so, visit John and Jimmy's YouTube channel. That is John and <laughs> Jung. Jung. And Jung. Yeah. And how do you spell Jung? J E O N G. J E. Korean. So yes. Korean, yeah. So it's John, like normal John, mm -hmm. with the H, yeah. and then Jung. And see me with the other Asian guy. And the other Asian guy. So if you go to that channel, it's not me. It's the other guy. So anyways, maybe one day, um, but uh, check that out as well as John's uh, website, Lehman.ca, and you'll see. So again, if this is the first time you're viewing this, John is a award-winning photojournalist, and so he has some amazing pictures. Ch check him out on, I'll put all his credentials down below, Instagram, uh, YouTube, website. But Thank we you. are, we, we've been talking for five minutes and not even talking about why we're here. No, everybody's like, we want to just see the XT2. Why doesn't Taka just shut up yeah. and show the camera? There so, it is there. So here we, here we are. We have the new Fujifilm XT2. And this is our first, first impressions. Um, I don't want to call this like a, a real review because both of us have pre-production models. Yeah. I have had mine for a couple of weeks and have used it actually on assignments, but yes. it is pre-production. and. The software has been a little glitchy, and I don't yes. think the autofocus is probably as good as it could be. I'm no. sure that will get changed. But, I mean, we should definitely talk about the hardware. Yes. And I think Fuji's got a pretty good tracker record with their software, but I think what really people want to know about is the sensor size yes. and the hardware. Yes, right? yes. And, and you, you actually have, I know you've dabbled. I actually have you on record for the, the time you did the, the shootout in Gastown mm -hmm. about how you didn't like the Fuji it was too convoluted. Now, yeah. now, now mind you, that right. was quite early, and it was their first gen cameras, the first gen. Lenses. I stand by that statement. Oh, do you? Okay, yeah. so you still find that it has too yeah. many, but it's more than the Nikon DSLRs. We just spent two minutes looking for how to change the the shutter rate. Oh, the the, the speed, yeah. the continuous it's, speed. Yeah. Well, you did, I didn't. Well, I asked you. You said you didn't know. I said I didn't care. <laughs> I was busy setting up. But okay, so you still stand by that. Yeah. Um. Uh. But you never tried the XT1 though, really, right? I had it for. I actually I owned it for a couple of oh, weeks. Oh, so you did have it. I did. Okay. And I, I I did like it. You did. Okay. So do you even remember then comparing that to this? We don't have an XT1. No, I like actually went into a store to see what the differences uh, were. Yeah. And the the improvements that uh, I think are really good. I think yeah, it's yeah. really good improvement. I think they took something that that worked that people were happy with yes. and improved on all the crappy parts. What yeah. What did you like about this? I like the improved size of the buttons because they are like uh, if you're wearing gloves, for example, they're mm. much easier to grasp. Yeah, I love this new locking mechanism. This is amazing because then you can just put it anywhere and just lock it down. Yes, at have any you, position. Have, have you seen that on any other? Is this like you? Well, all the cameras are like mostly for work. I use DSLRs, yes. Nikon's, yeah. and so a lot of this functionality is. Uh, you know, two buttons. So if you press ISO, change the ISO. Mm -hmm. This is much more mechanical than than sort of a interface, a software interface. So it's very retro. I can't tell you how many times I pull this out and use it, and people go, "Oh, you're still shooting film," <laughs> which I, I don't know. I find kind of amazing. People still think that, but no, it's it does look very retro. I think it looks very cool. Yeah, it is. What is amazing it is it is very easy to see what your settings are really, yes. really quickly. I notice how you're pulling back. 
Because I know you, my you need glasses. to buy focals. So. My glasses on, yeah. Okay, so so yeah. we do both have our X Pro twos, yeah. in which we did our discussion a few months mm -hmm. back. Another video of mine that you're in. Yeah. But um, so let's a little bit talk about. Okay, so forget XT1. We don't even have it with us. Mm -hmm. But uh, you talked about the ISO dial. You've made it very clear you're not. I'm you not a fan of that. No. Of the X Pro two with the pull and churn. Yeah. You like that it's dedicated. I like this. This is great. But obviously, yeah. you know, they couldn't put it on the X Pro two because the the range finder effect. I mean, then that's the, the huge advantage with this is you got the optical viewfinder. Yes. And the one. I think my the biggest downside for me on this camera is that it's um, an electronic viewfinder only, which is you know very good. But you know if you're shooting sports, you get you tend to get a, a little blackout in between frames. You get that on DSLRs too, though. If this is different though. You don't lose you don't lose pace with your subject. You can still clearly see your subject. The problem is is there's that that really I see quick what you review. Mean. Yes. Even though it's off, there's still a little review in there, I see. and so you lose. It's like the lag you're getting. Yeah, you're losing timing with your subject. And I was shooting oh, I horse see. racing. Oh yeah. And you're following as they come around the bend, and boom, and then all of a sudden you're behind because yeah yeah yeah. Ahead. So yeah yeah yeah. So that's something. That. Uh, that's something. I guess mirrorless cameras will never ever be able to get around because it is. Reading it is. Off the it seats. is improving though. You know, they said that the X Pro Two is like eighty-five frames per second, mm -hmm. and the new XT Two is one hundred frames. And that could also mm -hmm. be a little bit of the firmware issue, right? Well, I know, but this is the optical viewfinder, so. It's oh, like, of course. You know, yes. It's, yes. It's, you're seeing uh, what you're. You, you're seeing what you're seeing. This is, I mean, in some ways, it's even better than a than a DSLR because you, there is you, no blackout. There is no blackout at all. Exactly. And exactly. so you'll be able to keep pace. Yeah. With uh, with your subject. Yeah. Okay, and that maybe that only applies to sports, but you know, I think for any camera that's going to be an all-around camera, uh, it needs to be able to shoot sports as well. And this yeah. this comes very close, very close. Yeah. But. Um, yeah. So you so you have shot so we'll you you'll send me some pictures that you've taken amazing sure. pictures I've seen on John's um, Instagram account. Um, yeah, you'll notice it didn't say the type of body. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, when this comes out. Then yeah, so yeah. then you can go back and we'll see which ones you actually did. But uh, so you did okay. So other than sports, that leg when you did nature, when you did um, was it the bears? Did you? I just used to photographed some grizzly bears yeah, with yeah. the uh, one hundred to four hundred. Very good. Which is a monster lens. There, it's a monster lens, and yeah. I'll tell you, on this little body was very difficult. You definitely want the uh, optional grip, which wasn't uh, working properly, so they didn't send it to me. But I'm sure it will be when it comes out. Yes. But uh, it's it's really you know it's front really heavy. hard to use, really front heavy, really cuts into your palm. Mm. So you definitely want the grip with this. I, I think I think you want the grip with this camera no matter what. If you're not that kind of photographer, then you should yes. be getting the X Pro Two. Yes. But I think if you're going to use it for sports, for news photography, possibly for photojournalism, you're definitely going to want the the grip because you get the extra battery with it, so you get the extra you know time. Yeah. Uh, and you you know you're going to be able to use this. More what, balance. What, right? what do you call that again? Well, this is a seventy to two hundred, but it's yeah, yeah. They, it's a fifty I, to one forty. Yeah, I tease John because he, you, you and I are so old school. We think seventy yeah. two hundred. We think twenty four yeah. mil, but but yeah. APS C because it's crop, so at the fifty to one forty. Yeah. Fantastic lens. Yeah, I mean these are really like you know if you're full of journalists, these are go to lenses, right? Yeah, yeah. Fixed twenty four, fixed fifty. Uh, Ten to twenty four, which is a uh, sixteen to thirty five ish. Fifteen to thirty. 15 to 30, 1. right? 5. Right. 12, yeah. 20, 30. Yeah, 15 yeah. to 30. Yeah, so yeah. that's, you know, and, and the 70 to 200. I mean, is your, this is as what a you photojournalist, want. that's, yeah. you know, your basic kit. And then something longer, obviously. Um, that was for the bears. That's for the bears. I also shot surfing with it and horse racing. Mm. And it was good. You know, I think uh, if Fuji wants to be taken seriously uh, as a, you know, everyday camera for professional photographers, then you really need to produce a 300-2.8 or a 400-F4, yes, yes. Uh, which would be, like if you, they made a 300 that would be uh, you know, a 450 2.8, which is a substantial lens, and you, yeah. put a, you put a converter on there, and then you Which have they a, have, the yeah, new one point, yeah. you do test, yeah, you have the converters as well, but then you're yeah. not getting the same, the, the same aperture when you're shooting with those ones. No, but I, you, know, you, you go from 2.8 to F4 with this lens, which is fine, it's totally acceptable. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. did find, the this is 5.6 to 400, and if you're shooting bears, it's a little. It can be a little a bit dark. shaky. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or you crank it up to thirty. You gotta really you, you crank up the ISO because yeah. you know it can be cloudy. They're in the woods, so it's it's a good all round lens, but it's certainly not perfect. And it's pretty sharp though. It's not bad. I don't think it's as sharp as some of the other ones, but it's certainly what we would call a, a usable. And and, and so what you're recommending is maybe like a, so in APS terms, you want something like a, a two fifty to three hundred f two eight. 
Yeah. Which which when you do the 1.5 times is about a 400. Yeah. I think if they if they came out with a 405 or a 404 uh, f four. That would be a, like a 600, 600 F4, which would yeah. be covered you for everything. Which is what you, and which actually yeah. on your channel, you actually did a review of it. Yeah. Were you doing snowboarding? What, what were you doing with that? I can't oh, remember. that was a 600 F4. It was uh, surfing. Surfing, Tofino. exactly. Yeah. That, the compression you get with yes. that is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've noticed, and, and I've noticed this for myself too. I actually did ask Fuji to send me um, uh, the, the 16 to 55 to 8 because I felt that because this seems to be targeted to DSLR shooters, mm -hmm. that this is the type of lens that an event photographer, a wedding photographer, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. photojournalist would want to use. Mm -hmm. It's big, it's clunky, but I mean, DSLR guys, that's what they're used to. Mm -hmm. But when I have the X-Pro2, I want to put primes on it. Yeah. More compact, it's lighter. Yeah. Do you find that, I mean, I'm kind of noticing that's what you're doing with yours yeah. too. You're putting the primes on the yeah. Pro2, and you're putting the super zooms on the X-T2. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, I think this is a very good lens. I've heard very good things about it. Yeah. It's not. It's not a focal length, uh, length that I'm uh, really excited about. Twenty four to yeah. You know, I think if you're using this lens, you're not making really good pictures. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you shot weddings before? I have, but I would. I would probably still shoot primes. I would probably still go with primes. The sixteen, yeah. yeah. Except for maybe the ceremony where you know you get an angry, an angry. Uh, don't see it. Minister. Oh, I thought you were going to say Bridezilla. <laughs> no, oh, okay. but they don't like to be interviewed. Yeah, yeah, and they don't want But for most of everything else, I yeah. mean, you're the only, except for all the, the in-laws with their iPhones, you're pretty much the only photographer there, so. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so John, we've been talking a lot about workflow of a professional. I think when you are as a, as a guest, people do want to see you and sort of hear what you think. But let going back to the X-T2, because that's why we're yeah. here. Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask people is the new articulating screen. Now you come yeah. from DSLRs, do they all pretty much fold out? Like is it the full articulating and you can flip back? Are you used to this type where- So my, my D4S yes. does not have a, a articulating screen at all. Yes, with the, top, the Canon top lens yeah. end doesn't. Usually the one below that- that's, I have a D750 which yes. articulates and it's great, I, I love it. Um, but that's that the, it's the one that flips out sideways? No, I think it only goes up and down. Oh, like that's this, it really, okay. Which is all I really need, I mean, unless okay. you're like, the other thing too is this, I love that this goes up and down and I yes. think that's all I need. But it does this weird like L shaped thing, and it's like I don't know if you want to fly around with somebody on a corner or something. Well, that and that I'm was not the sure question. What I was that's gonna, for. Okay, this is what I've come up with, John. What if do you, you think? want to shoot backwards? No. What do you think about this vertical, and you can look down. That's the only real uh, functional use I can see. Because yeah. some people like shooting down low this way, so this is the only thing I can see why anyone mm. would want that. Yeah. So the verdict is not out. Actually, for John, you seem kind of skeptical. I just, skeptical. well, I just, I very, I, don't, I hardly shoot verticals anymore. It's just not, you know, the internet's so horizontal. Right? Yes, yes, And yes. newspapers are horizontal now, so I, I almost never shoot verticals. Shoot vertically? Guess, okay. You know, obviously, if, I guess if you do portraits, you, you, you would shoot vertically. And on a tripod, maybe, and but that's kind of how you're viewing it. I don't know. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's, yeah. the verdict's not out yet on this. As, as more and more people use it, Maybe there's some creative way that us old timers can't even think <laughs> Maybe, of eh? to figure out some new way. I, I, myself personally, um, do you find, have you had a chance to play with the video features? No. Um, so this is more video centric because mm -hmm. it has the full, I say full, but it's a 3.5 mil uh, plug-in for microphone mm -hmm. instead of that tiny little 2.5 mil mm -hmm. before it buddied up. So the 2.5 mil could be either a remote control <laughs> or a microphone. This is right. a dedicated microphone. Yeah. It actually has HDMI streaming output. So mm -hmm. if you look through the menus, mm -hmm. you can actually go straight out to an external recording device. Mm -hmm. So if you shoot weddings or something like that, you can stream. So it seems like this is sort of video centric, a 4K video as well now. Yeah. Uh, I did, I, sorry, a little off video, just because you opened this door. Yeah. I did find it amazing. They've got USB 3 in here, which is yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't know it's nice. of any cameras that have that, but uh, I think... The Leica SL has it, oh, okay. but that's a really narrow market camera. Yeah. It doesn't really... I think that's a great functionality. I, I don't know, uh, you know, I think if you want to tether straight to your laptop, that's going to be a great feature. Yes. Yeah. Um, going back to the idea of video, because it's video, I thought maybe it would have been nice that it flipped out sideways. Um, people may want to use it like a vlogging camera. Okay. Guys like Casey Neistat has made vlogging cool. Right. And, and I think Fuji has great lenses mm -hmm. and this is a great body. The fact that vloggers can't see themselves, I thought that it would have been. And also, um, 
the flip out ones can also flip around and close and you can actually then just completely cover the back screen. So I think the, the camera would have been a lot wider to do that, to get that, to get the to engineer that, or that, a screen that can do that. Yeah, that's, you're right. It is and a I, narrower <clears throat> body. Casey Neistat uses like a Canon 7D or 70 70D and an 80D. Right, yeah. which is like probably twice as wide as this. So when you I, say wide, do you mean like thickness? Yeah. You don't mean this I way, think yeah. it would have to be a lot thicker to, to able to get the, the mechanics and the engineering in there to flip it out. Well, you know, I had the, the little tiny compact Canon G5X. Mm, right. That thing's a full articulating, and that thing's like, I bet you, a thir uh, two thirds the thickness. Mm -hmm. So I think Fuji can do it. But again, this is coming from a video centric. I mean, I'm not a video centric guy, but I do shoot a lot of videos. So I would have liked that. You are not. So even if this didn't articulate, you'd still like this camera. If the screen didn't articulate. Oh, uh, I think they have to put the articulating on. I mean, I think that's one of the things missing in yes. X Pro 2 yes. is the articulating but, screen. But how often do you, I think I have you again on record saying that you're not a big articulate. Because I mean. Well, no, you want to shoot all your photos like that, but it's yeah. definitely a tool. Yes. And let's say it's only 5% of you know, what I shoot is with the screen. Yeah. What is great, I think it's great for landscape photography or knife photography, star photography, because you're usually on a tripod like yeah. this. Yes, and you don't. And it saves funny... you from having to do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can just do that. Because I was I shot uh, in Joshua Tree Park, and I'm shooting the stars with, with these cameras when I was testing it out last time. Yeah. And what I really missed from that was the artic articulating screen. Oh, okay. I like okay. tilty flippy better. Tilty, okay. So the tilty <laughs> flippy scene. So, so you like it. You and I both feel we don't really know if this is functional, the sideways out thing. I also thought like around corners <laughs> and conflict zones or something like that. Or I don't know. It's mm. about being stealthy. Yeah. I think maybe vertical is the only way. I just don't my, like myself too. Other than Instagram, mm -hmm. I don't shoot vertically. Mm -hmm. And so I don't really see a purpose for this. Maybe some studio guys will find it mm -hmm. useful. So comment down below if you have an idea or if you also have been reviewing this. Um, other things. Um, talk about the doors. They're much better now. Yeah, the old one was goofy. Like, they were like really cheap, but these it are real cheap. doors. Yes. This is, and this is also a design element that's different than here on the Expert 2. Yes. So there's actually a lock on here. Yes. Which I think that this mechanicism is sort of, is fine. I think On this, the Expert 2 you mean? Yeah, I think this, this one is a step too far. I don't think you need this and uh, it yes. actually slows you down. It does. You, it does. So, yeah. so maybe it's more, it, maybe it's better sealed this way. But, but visually, um, I find, yeah, just pulling this back and opening it is a lot easier, right? This is much faster. Yeah, and I actually think when you, when you open this, no, see, it still stays on, which is odd. I felt that when you open the door, it should automatically uh, blank the out. The Nikon does that. Yeah, in case you didn't want it open, you open by accident and the water gets in, so it automatically turns off. It doesn't, uh, same with the XC2, it doesn't turn off. But yeah, I found that you have to use your nails to get it open, right? Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it does feel solid. The old XT1, I'm like, you probably don't remember, but I think it was just a rubber gasket here. It, it, was, was, it wasn't I even look, a door. I went to the store and looked, store and yeah. looked, and it was just really a really flimsy. cheap, flimsy door. Yeah, it had a, uh, a little is, thin strip of rubber or something. That, this is actually flush. And yeah, it finishes, yeah. It finishes much better. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so we talked about the EVF, the LCD, uh, the, but, the button feel. I, um, oh, much better. Yeah, the XT uh, the XT it's, one was horrible. It was really mushy and, yes. and gross. It was their first gen weather sealed body, so I get they didn't like yeah. Nikon, Canon. They've been doing for a decade now, yeah. so they got it down straight. These guys, the, yeah, yeah, it was goofy. This is kind of clicking. I mean, the camera's off, and you can't hear the the audio click click the the fake click. But yeah. you can you can feel it now. You yes. can feel the clickiness. It's great. There's no chance of a real error. Compared with the X Pro Two, though, I actually still the, prefer the. They X are Pro designed 2. a little bit. Okay, so the, for those of you who know the X system, the XT10 had this concave style. Notice how it curves in yeah. the four-way dial. Uh, the X Pro Two is kind of convex. It's mm -hmm. kind of bulbous. Yeah. It's 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 a softer feel. Yeah. Um, I prefer the convex. I prefer mm -hmm. the X-T2, mm -hmm. uh, this feel. Uh, John, you like the more rounded I convex do, yeah. style? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a preferential thing. And um, this is and this is more clicky. This is more like yeah, you can actually, making, you can actually feel the decision that you're making. Or you can probably even, yeah. can even hear that. Whereas right? on here, it's... Yes, it's a little bit more, so it yeah. seems like I mean, the weather sealing should be equal. They don't claim this is more weather sealed than this. Mm -hmm. um, actually, just a quick uh, disclaimer. When you get pre-production, and like for John and I, when you get it quite early, there's no manual. And I mentioned this in my unboxing. So there are details like you and I are like, 
texting each other mm -hmm. saying, how does this work? What does yours do? But um, so this, yeah, we do have early pre-production. By the time this video is out, we probably will have the finalized firmware. And um, so this is, it has the same sensor, the same processor. Uh, the biggest difference for me is that this does not have 4K video, which most of us knew the processor and sensor had the ability to do 4K, but they decided not to uh, allow to, to be able to do 4K. The X-T2 is coming out right away 4K, and the X-Pro2 at this time cannot do it. So you don't care, but some guys do care about that. You know what I do care about? What do Which you care is really about? Uh, my most and probably annoying thing about the Fuji system is this the AEL and the AFL buttons. Yes. So you can swap them yes. so that the AEL can become the A autofocus yeah. lock or on for autofocus. So you can turn, you can use this button yes. to for solely for turning on autofocus yes. and focusing. Yes. And you can disengage the focus from the shutter. Yes. Anybody with a DSLR, actually, that's pretty much how they shoot. They only use this button for focusing and this button for shooting. Yes. And that way you, you never you need to use single shot yes. focusing. Please, Fuji, please. Please. For the love of God, make this button bigger so you can actually use it with your thumb, like every DSLR on the market. Instead of your the tip of your nails. Yeah, it's ridiculous because, yes. the I mean, they did improve on the X-Pro2 and this camera, the yeah. half the half shutter yes. so that you can lock in focus yep. and continue. Yep. But what you really need to do as a professional photographer is autofocus and your shutter should be separate yes. so that you can focus properly Yes, and then, and then, it, then, it's, then it stays there. And it stays there. And you so take there's your, no lag. And you take your, your thumb off the focus and then this is now this is just strictly a shutter. Yes, right. The two should not be joined together. Yes. And you can now, you can separate it Yes. and you can change the buttons around which is great. But it's so hard still, to use. Still small. I can't like if I use my finger, thumb like this, is which is how I should be yes. using it. I can't push that button. I gotta like do this, and that really hurts. It's how, big, how big? I share. You got pretty big thumbs. Wait, John is like what are you like seven foot eight? John's six a big two, guy. Six two. Six two. Okay, so for me, a normal it's, white it, guy. It, height, <laughs> there okay. you go. So this is okay for me, but you're right. Yeah. A, a proper DSLR, even like my Sony's from like mm -hmm. ten years ago, mm -hmm. had a decent size autofocus lock. Decent mm -hmm. size, right? Yeah. That you can easily press. This is still tiny, and I still think this is misplaced. Yeah, the, I swap. The AFL them. should the... always be. Yeah, I was the one who showed you that you could uh, yes, you change can that swap. actually. Yes. You can swap. Exactly. Because this, I mean, can you imagine trying to use this button and this button? At the same yeah, this time? button, you could almost rather have that as a the video. The camera's going to fall out of your hand. Exactly. So that, yeah, exactly. So you can swap this on the X Pro 2 as well. And then, then it's, a, it's a long stretch to yeah. this one. Well, right. it's not too bad for me there. Okay. Yeah. But it's still in a very awkward position. Like you have to, now you have to use the two hands on the camera to do that. Yeah. So that you can balance. But. So let's um, let's um, talk more I'm about. Become angry photographer. And you become the angry. Oh, you think he's gonna watch this video? I don't. Know. If he does, he's gonna destroy us. Probably yes. Okay, John. So um, we've been ranting a little bit. Yes. But let's get on. I mean, but we we do it because we, especially for you, you use it for work. And I think every camera you can complain about anything, right? Am I correct? Yes. Is there is there a perfect camera? No. No. You, no. So you could no. rant about no. any camera, no. about any button placement. But for me though, it's what comes closest to fulfilling all my my dreams. What can I use every day? I would I would love to be able to use a system like this every day. I mean, it would save the me my back. It's smaller. Yes. It's great yeah. for traveling. Yeah. You know, I would say I can probably cover off ninety percent of my work with either one of these cameras. Yes. But there's still a large percentage of my work that I can't. Like I'm going to Rio in August to cover the Olympic Games, mm. and uh, there's just no way I could get away with a system like this. Uh, you still need a you know a professional DSLR for for covering an event like that. Yeah, yeah, and and especially that four hundred two eight. 600 mm. f4 you're looking for yeah. fuji at this time does not have it no. you just even if you wanted to take the fuji stuff they have to come up with a, a, a yeah a super telly prime yes for yeah. the type of work you do yeah so let's get back on okay. the subject about the button placement no, stop being angry it's something angry um i noticed like okay, we talked about the compactness you know notice how the exposure compensation the shutter dial this is all very flush to the body Mm -hmm. Notice how these things all stand up like towers. They're all kind of like on top. Okay. Um, yeah. Did you notice a difference as you sh like, for instance, the old X-T1 had a horrible mushy shutter that was not a threaded release. Okay, I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. And so this is a huge, like, can you tell the difference between the X-Pro2 and the X-T2? If you haven't, can you feel it? Which do you like better? 
And maybe I hold, don't mind either one. Okay, hold the it in your X hand. The X-Pro 2 is definitely like physically a bit hold more it. recessed. Okay, feel, yeah, feel it in your hand. Okay. Can I open my eyes? You can open your eyes if you want. This is not a blind test. You know which is which. And now grab the X-Pro 2. Actually, well, that's X-T2. Uh, the X-T2 is definitely more substantial. Yes. But I could go, I could go with either one. Either one. Yeah. Uh, I also found that the X-T2 shutter feels nicer, like mm -hmm. the the angle that you're pressing it at, the torque, mm -hmm. seems a little better, but with the soft release, with the soft release, you can improve the torque mm -hmm. on the X-Pro2, right? And, uh, okay, so we've already talked about uh, the locking, so it does lock on both sides, the ISO, and I did notice you gaffer tape the... Um, oh, on both these cameras. Yeah. They, they both slip, this one's, really really bad because it's on the edge yeah. right on the edge yeah, so you the, have to tape it over so the diopter yeah. control if unless you're sharing a camera with someone which i don't like to share my camera yeah. it's like sharing, sharing glasses with someone don't, share. Your don't share a laptop glasses. don't share a phone exactly so um for i i do any of the other dslrs have a system where you click in you can adjust it and then you click it down or is there any that the, you I think use? the nikon you pull out pull out and turn i'm not sure though yeah but i also tape that up Oh, you tape it up. I okay. tape them all up because they okay. do, they will move. But these are these are really really bad. Horrible. Yeah, you take it out of your camera bag and you're ready to shoot, and you're like, why is everything blurry? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I find that this slips really easy as well. The X T two, it's a little bit better because it's hidden. Mind you, you shot with it more. It still um, slips. It still slips. I still had to tape it up. Yeah. Okay. Did you find that these? Okay, so you can lock the top dial, yeah. but you can't lock the bottom. Have you noticed any no, slippage? Not slipped at all. Okay. And the uh, compensation dial, is, this is probably their best compensation dial ever. This is like perfect because I can move it with my thumb. I mean, it's hard. It's really yes. hard. It's almost yeah. better like this. Yeah. But I don't have to look up to move it. Yes. And it's really, it's really substantial. Yeah. And it's just in the right spot. Yeah. And it's not going to like, so yes. I can't move Absolutely it down. Rob. Yes, not, exactly. So, so it comes out of your counter bag. There's no way you would have yeah. shipped it on you. And this, this is... This is actually easier with just your thumb. I can move this yes. with just my thumb. Yes. And I don't. I haven't seen it slip. I haven't noticed. I haven't. I haven't noticed it slip. No. Um, and probably people will be probably horrified to hear this. I know some people have. I don't know why, but uh, I I tend to leave something on automatic on my camera, so that if I see something, I can just whip it out and I start shooting, and I don't have to worry about the exposure. I leave it on auto ISO. Yeah. And I leave it on auto shutter. Yeah. And I always leave it wide open. So you're and basically shooting aperture priority. Yeah. yeah. And I, in the parameters, I put um, a maximum of 128. Of the second? Yeah, 12,800 12, ISO. Okay. And then I put the minimum shutter at 400. So then I can just, that's a, like, you can shoot in here in that. So I always just, I can whip it out and I can just shoot. And uh, it's fine. I, I, I was talking to somebody else, and he was horrified to learn that I, I often use automatic. But but is he a working professional? Is he kind of like a <laughs> hyper uh, camera nerds hobbyist? Yeah, that's probably a, be a fair description. Because if he is, yes, he's a principled photographer. Yeah. You need to feed your family, and you need, <laughs> you, you need to get the money. But shot, it's like right? auto, so it's like autofocus. Like who doesn't use autofocus? It's there. Why wouldn't you use it? Yes. So the ability to shoot on auto is there too. Why wouldn't you use it? It doesn't make and, me any. I mean, what I'm most concerned about is capturing a moment, capturing yeah. time, not about the the perfect combination of ISO and shutter and aperture, but I want to capture, does I want to capture time and I want to capture Does the guy moment. shoot a Leica? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Actually, I'm not really sure what he shoots, but yeah. So yeah, don't be embarrassed with using the functions of the camera. So and there's th actually, there are three auto ISO, um, ISO settings, the regular and then high and low. So you can actually have different parameters. Two. Right, you can right. loop it. So you can right. have one for low, meaning ISO yeah. 200 to 800, yeah. and then you have your main one. Maybe it's a okay. wider parameter, and then high means like if yeah. you're you want it 800 and above yeah. to 12,000. So and you that's can something set those. the Fuji system does very well because on a you can do the same thing on a Nikon D4s. Yeah, but you actually have to dive pretty oh, deep I into see. the menu settings to do this. Yeah, whereas this is just like well, this is probably a better example. Yes, here. So it's, you just, actually, you it's just part of your dial. Yeah, you just turn it, and there you are. A. Yeah. Yeah, and then your ISO is yeah on A, and then so you, so so you do keep everything on auto when you need to shoot right away, except yeah. your aperture, because that's the one parameter that I mean, if you want to control. a football or a hockey game. I mean, it's going to be consistent light. Yes. So then I you know put everything on manual because yeah, yeah, I know yeah. exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. But uh, you know, like for example, the opening and closing ceremonies at the Olympics. I mean, the lights changing every two seconds. Yes. And to have the ability to work. 
quickly, yeah. then sometimes you got to put the auto on. Yeah, very good. Um, are we finished talking about all the buttons and dials? I think we pretty much are. I'm kind of buttoned out. So again, John, you and I both have uh, pre-production models, so we can't mm -hmm. talk too much about AF speed. We'll post the pictures that John has done with it. Overall, what do you think then of the XT2? It's good. Yeah. Uh, you and know, I think it's a real. I think um, these are not the same cameras. And either yeah. you want this is what you want with the optical viewfinder, yeah, and this one will meet your your needs, yeah. Or you know maybe if you're coming from a DSLR system, this will maybe yes. meet your needs better. But they're two totally different cameras, and they're for two totally different types of photography. This you know you can probably do anything you want with, and it's probably the most versatile. Yes. Whereas I think if you're more of a documentary quote unquote street photographer. Yeah. Uh, this is probably the way you want to go. And this is a great setup, actually. This lens on this camera is pretty yeah. awesome. The, the, My the, other favorite lens is, of course, the, the 16, 16. 1.4, which is a 24. Yeah. But uh, it's not as not as stealthy as that one. It's not as um, small. But it's still very good. So we'll talk about this very quickly, though. You have two X Pro 2 bodies, and you explain why you have two. Oh, well, you know, it's very hard to use an X Pro 2 body and a D4S on a sign. Yes. So, I thought I wanted to give them a really good shake. Yeah. Uh, Fuji oh. lent me a, uh, a camera, and I have bought a camera. I oh, like it that much. Yeah. I, you know, it's a, even if I don't end up using it for work every day, it's still it's a great family camera, great yeah, holiday yeah, yeah. camera. Uh, and you really, I find when you're uh, taking pictures professionally, you need two bodies, yes. and you want them to be very similar, if not exactly the same. So you set the settings identical. So everything's the same, yeah. and you really just, you know, it's, it's, it's a matter of convenience, so you're not swapping lenses. Yeah. And but this is a very good setup for a professional documentary photographer. You got a twenty-four and a, and a fifty, which is really your two 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 go lenses. <laughs> yes, and which which is what you used to do more often with your Leicas, but now mm -hmm. you're kind of giving these yeah. a go and you're but even on my D four S's, you know, the, the, it's almost always a fifty and a the fifty eight Nikkor and the twenty four, uh, mm. which are attached to the bodies, which I yeah. use ninety. Nine percent of the time. Very good. And so, would you then? So, a lot of guys are like, "Oh, the dream, get an X Pro Two and an XT 2 As a working professional, you probably. No. I mean, you're not gonna sit there and tell people what to do. But if you're a wedding guy, you should probably get either two of these or two of these. Yeah, I think you want continuity when you're working. So yeah. that when you pick, because even uh, when I was testing the XT, uh, the uh, T, no, the XT Two out. Yes. And I would have this camera with me. Yeah. And I would I would pick it up to take some other picture, and I'd be like, Oh, oh the settings are off. Mm. The buttons are all different. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it even it even took me a couple of days. I actually asked. I emailed Billy from Fuji, who's yeah. been amazing with his technical support. And thanks, Billy. Thanks, Billy. I was like, I can't turn the viewfinder off. Where's the Where's the damn button? Yeah, it's, it's, it's on the <laughs> exactly. side of the prism. I'm like, <laughs> exactly. Oh, it's right, right there. Yeah. This This is set up for one-handed use, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Um, and yes. this is you it's know two, this is so you two have, yeah you have stuff on the on yeah. this side as well more like a DSLR yeah yeah, yeah very good yeah. excellent so thank you John um, we for didn't this talk about the batteries though what about rant about the batteries okay John's gonna rant about the batteries John the batteries are awful please aside from this button make the batteries more powerful make them a little bigger but uh, they they get eaten through pretty quick because especially when you're using a lens like this. With yes. image stabilization and yes. autofocus, it yes. only lasts just over an hour for Oh, battery. really? Yeah, which the, is pretty atrocious. The vertical control grip should have bad extra yeah. batteries in there. That will help. Yes. Yeah. Um, you come from the DSLR background without an EVF. EVF also drains yeah. a lot of battery. Yeah. DSLRs, if you turn off the rear preview and you're shooting all day, yeah. absolutely no EVF or LCD yeah. used, right? I went to Mongolia for a week. Oh, yes, that was and a good I series. And uh, I, I didn't change the batteries once in my D4S. Oh, really? I bought the charger and four sets of batteries, or two, two sets of batteries for each camera. Oh, I see. You know, I went for a week. Day. I went for oh, a week wow. without changing batteries. Wow. So. so, Fuji, <laughs> better batteries, please. Yes. So other than that, we're pretty pleased with yeah, the XT2. I, I think anybody that wants to upgrade from uh, XT1, I think it's definitely worth it. Yeah. I think you're going to get better, a better performing camera, yeah. better quality sensor. You've got better ergonomics. You got better design. Yeah. I think, you know, Fuji's taken what wasn't so great about the camera and improved it really. Yeah. yeah. So, and I think. Either you're going to be an X Pro Two kind of shooter, or you're going to be an XT Two kind of shooter. Yeah. Um, what you you do for a living will sort of determine that. How about you? Now that you have both, would you and you bought the X Pro Two? Would you buy an XT Two? I don't want to put you on the spot here. You're, okay. Well, man, you know what? You know what? I'm I'm going to wait until a production model. Yes. 
with and with the booster on the bottom. Yes. And now we'll see. Yeah, we'll because see. again, you did complain a little bit about the AF, but I told you that the firmware is not mm. finished, so that's not a true judge. So mm -hmm. okay, so we're gonna have a part two. I'm gonna have you on again. September. In September yeah. for the 18th time <laughs> on my channel. I'm gonna count and put how many times you've been on my channel. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then how many times I I've, I've been on your channel and how many times on my channel. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Again, we're at, at uh, Yankath. Vancouver in the Railtown district. Thank you, Jenny and Ben and the other Jenny for allowing us to use this space. And uh, we will and have fun in, in Rio. Thank you. And what other yeah. projects you're off to follow. So again, follow John on his Instagram. You'll see wherever he is traveling the world. Go to his YouTube channel. I'll, oh, no, I'll have a review of my, the X T2 on my channel. Oh, too. very good, excellent, yeah, at the yeah. same time. So yeah, we'll put the yeah, link. Yeah, it'll be this, uh, probably the same, same, same time, July 7th. So, July 7th at one Eastern Standard but, Time, you know so what? 11 Pacific time. So uh, thank you so much for watching, and we will finish off again at my 14 frames per second, and you wanna mm -hmm. do your eight frames per second? Okay, ready? So thank you so much for watching, and happy shooting. Mm -hmm.